On today's episode, we are going to take a look at my top four payment stocks. So let's get started. And the top four are going to be Square, PayPal, MasterCard, and Visa. And we are going to take a nice amount of information for all of them. We're going to see how they're expected to grow in both earnings and revenue. We're going to take a look at their revenue breakdown, their past margins growth, and their balance sheet just to get an overall picture of all of these. And before we go any further, guys, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, the thumbs up, and the bell. It helps the small channel out so much, and I truly, truly appreciate all the support I'm getting from you guys. If you guys ever want to get in contact with me, comments is the best place. Or also, you can find me on Twitter, which I'm very active. And I do have a Discord channel, which is free to anybody that wants to join. We have a lot of great people there. There's a lot of great discussions going on there. But if you are looking for a place to get recommendations, this is not the channel for you. I pretty much just do in-depth analysis analysis of company and if i mean in-depth analysis it's I, I take hours and hours and days looking at a company today i'm gonna provide so much information for you guys but since we're taking a look at four companies it's not gonna be to the degree where i normally do so if you guys want me to do and, and you're gonna see you're gonna be like wow jose if this is what you do for a quick overview i can't imagine what you do for a full in-depth analysis so like i said i promise it's still gonna be plenty and plenty of information for all of these stocks but like i said if you guys want to learn more about them feel free to let me know in the comments below also this monday coming up it's gonna be another episode of monday matches and monday matches if you guys don't know is when i put two companies against each other and i see which one is the one i would prefer to invest in it doesn't mean that the other company is a bad investment it just means that i'm trying to find that true true winner in the last episode i did microsoft versus apple and it was a blowout i honestly couldn't believe the scores that ended up in each of them but let me know which one you guys want to see on my next episode coming this monday maybe square versus paypal as we're going to see those two are going to be the big the big growers between these four that we're looking at so those two i would be pretty interested in seeing microsoft versus google is our two another one i would be very happy to do and someone actually posted on the comments and mentioned and nvidia versus amd i am big into tech stock i am an electrical engineer so those are my all of these are actually kind of my bread and butter so if you guys want me to take a look at any of them make sure to let me know on the comments below and like i said right this is not to anything but i'm 100 percent sure there's no youtuber putting the amount of information that i put it might be a little heavy for some but that's okay i'm here to provide information and at the end of the day no recommendations come out from these channel but the amount of experience the amount of learning that i have been a student of the market for the past six seven years i can honestly say i put thousands and thousands of hours where other people out there do not have the, the cannot match me right now I, I i breathe and eat this on a daily basis and i'm constantly learning and the one thing i know is i don't know everything and that drives me to learn even more and more all right so first we're gonna take a look at square right now square has a market cap of about 43 billion dollars this is actually gonna be the smallest out of the other four that we're looking at out of the other three that we're looking at and normally when you are the smallest you are more likely to be the the, the strongest growth of them all all right, so now let's take a look at future analyst forecasted growth. Annual revenue growth is supposed to be around 21.4%, where the industry is only growing about 11.2% and the market is growing at 9.1%. So we can see the overall market is, the overall industry is still pretty strong. It seems like the overall payment industry is gonna be doing better than the overall market in relations to um, revenue growth. But we can see this company is even double what the industry is expected to see right 21.4 percent and that is the average within the next um then that is the average annual revenue growth within the next three to five years next if we take a look at forecast annual earnings growth the market is expected to grow somewhere around 22.6 percent the industry is expected to go somewhere around 25.3 percent so again the industry seen this industry that square is in and it's going to be very similar to all the other ones right they're all in the same industry so 25 percent three in the industry is still a bit a bit better than the market but we can see square is expected to grow 89.3 percent on annual for the next three to five years so this is actually pretty impressive and we can see why this is one of the main top growers out of these top three now let's take a look at square's revenue breakdown so square in the most recent quarter made about 1.4 billion dollars that 1.4 billion dollars comes from the following transactions 
758 million 760 million come from transaction based revenues so i don't know if you guys know what square is but square if you go to a small business and even big businesses square has actually posted their things where a huge portion of their customers are not small businesses i think over 50 percent is actually large businesses um with over 500 million dollars in the revenue so transaction if you guys don't know square they they are pretty much this payment payment all-in-one payment application so if you are a small business you go with square they give you some products some hardware where you can use that hardware to collect all different types of payments right if you see the white box and when you go to a restaurant that's most likely square transaction based revenues that's the money they collect when um whenever some transaction happens through the square software application and half hardware application all right so the next one we're going to take a look at is subscription and service based revenue and actually one thing i want to mention about transaction based revenues that does not only happen in in store right square also works on creating online stores for their customers so even though covid19 has really hurt the company uh, has really hurt small businesses small businesses are also being transformed into online e-commerce business and square is also taking advantage of that because they also work in the online payment as well so next we're going to take a look at subscription and service-based revenues and this is again if you are a company you can hire square you pay like a yearly fee where you, they manage where you can use their hardware you can use their software to overall continue your business maybe do an online website store next we have hardware revenue hardware revenue is when they sell you those those pieces for to actually sell and this makes up almost nothing it's only 20 million dollars out of that 1.3 billion dollars then this company also has something which it calls bitcoin revenue and bitcoin revenue even though it's such a big portion is 300 million dollars it, it's really not anything anything amazing because out of that 306 million dollars the actual cost to collect that revenue was about 300 million so out of that 306 million dollars of revenue they only made six million dollars of that bitcoin revenue is pretty much they you can purchase bitcoin through some part of their cash applications they have different services as well they do have like a if you guys are familiar with Venmo or paypal they do have some form of application like that and you can actually purchase bitcoin through there this is one part of their revenue i'm not happy how they report especially since it's such a huge expense right like i said 306 million dollars in bitcoin revenue and it's about 300 million dollars of bitcoin cost so this is pretty much nothing but it shows such a huge growth right for example last year this company's bitcoin revenue was 65 million so if you take a look at that you can see wow this company's revenue is growing pretty big unfortunately they don't make pretty much anything out of that so to me i i really hate that they show this as part of their revenue all right so now that we know how they make money let's take a look at their past revenue growth and actually if we take a look at this revenue growth if we even include um if we include the total total revenue total revenue increased by about 30 percent but again a huge portion of that revenue increase was all thanks to that bitcoin revenue jump all the other ones did see a nice jump transaction based revenue increased by i want to say close to close to eight percent then you have subscription and service revenues which increased by about 20 30 percent so they do have to they do show a nice steady growth in those other transactions which actually make money for this company now let's take a look at historical revenue growth in 2019 they made they their growth was 43 percent compared to 2018 in 2018 it was again it was 49 percent compared to 2017 and in 2017 it was 30 percent compared to 2016 so we can see this is a heavy grower anything above 20 percent on an annual basis it, to me is is definitely a strong growth stock to be in next let's take a look at the margins and then we're going to take a look at the balance sheet so the first thing i'm seeing is gross margins are increasing over time in 2019 gross margins were 40 percent in 2016 they were 33.7 and overall the overall the overall curve of these of this gross margins the overall trend is going up all right so next let's take a look at profit margins profit margins first we saw this was one of those heavy growers right we saw growing about 40 percent last year 
sometimes most of the times that growth comes at a price and usually when you are growing that fast it means that right now you're most likely not making money because you're spending all your money in acquiring more customers in 2016 this company was not making any money at all and until 2019 was the first year it actually became profitable profit margins were eight percent and we can see an overall uptrend so that's actually pretty good that we're still seeing an uptrend in gross margins and uptrend for profit margins and that square is actually still growing in revenue so this is actually looking pretty good for Square. Next, let's take a look at the balance sheet. And this is actually my favorite document to take a look at. I feel like you can learn so much of it. And this is in their most recent earnings. So this company had about $2 billion in cash and $700 million in current investments. So that's pretty much quick cash, something they can sell pretty quickly and grab it in cash. So that's about $2.7 billion. This company has pretty much no current debt. It had 37 million and it had $2.1 billion in non-current debt. So in theory, Square can actually use all its cash and all its current investments to pay off all its total, all its non-current debt and current debt and still have cash left over. So for me, Square definitely has a, a nice strong balance sheet. And normally with a growth, uh, with a growth business like this, you expect them to have a strong balance sheet to be able to survive when things go bad. All right, the second one we're gonna take a look at is PayPal. And PayPal I actually just did a video about this. Uh, I think it's actually yesterday's video that I did on PayPal. So feel free to check that one out if you wanna learn a little bit more about PayPal. I do a little more in depth in that video. So definitely feel free to check it out. I also found another, actually I did not find it. Someone in our Discord channel mentioned the company, recommended to take a look at it. So now everybody in the Discord channel wanted me to do a video on it. So I did that on the previous episode. But now let's take a look at PayPal and their annual forecasted growth for earnings and, re and revenue. So so PayPal's revenue is expected to grow 14.8% in on the, on the next three to five years on an annual basis. Forecasted annual earnings growth for the next three to five years is about 32.1%. All of these are better than the industries like we mentioned before the industry for revenue is about 11.2 and the industry for earnings is about 25.3 both are better than the market and paypal is both better than the industry so that's actually pretty good we did see square was a lot better right when we take a look at square their annual earnings growth is a lot better but when we take a look at revenue growth it's not that much much larger compared to paypal's now let's try to learn how paypal actually makes money and i do wish most businesses showed their earnings like this where they actually showed the amount of growth year to year some companies do some companies don't as we saw square did it and for that reason i want to go kick them um just kidding don't i'm not going to go kick square but um let's take a look at paypal so paypal last quarter made revenue of about 4.6 billion dollars that 4.6 billion dollars more than 90 percent comes from something called transactions revenue so transactions revenues whenever you use paypal they charge some form of fees that's where it comes from that's where their main main that's where the main revenue comes from. So over nine, 90%. The other 10% comes from something they called other value added services. So PayPal also has like other services where you might want to, if you have like some subscription base for your business or anything of that matter, any random services that PayPal can offer to you, that's where that revenue is coming. But again, that is such a small portion. It's less than 10% of the total revenue. They actually have it here. It's 9% of the total revenue. The total revenue did grow about 12% compared to same time last year. And that actually is pretty strong for, that's actually a pretty strong growth, right? Now let's take a look at historical growth for PayPal. PayPal in 2019 grew 15%, in 2018 it grew 18%, and in 2017 it grew 20%. So we are seeing a decline of revenue growth. It's not as strong as Square, but it's still anything in the double digits, I still would put, uh, put it in some form of a growth category it's not the strongest growth but it's still growing right 12 percent in the last year was still pretty impressive next let's take a look at this company's gross margins and profit margins first let's take a look at profit margins profit margins seem to be pretty flat normally when you see a business no longer growing in revenue it most likely means that they're getting to a point where now it's just start it's just time to start like start focusing 
on mastering themselves. So when that happens, you normally see gross margins and profit margins start to get really flat. And if they do see an improvement, it is very, very small. The first thing I see, profit margins seem to be steady around the 13%. This past year was 13.8. Unfortunately, one thing I don't like about PayPal is their gross margins do seem to be in the downtrend. In 2016, it was 47.4. In 2019, it was down to 44.9. Still, it is in those high 40%, which is pretty strong. And with this company actually being profitable for the past four years, that's also very uh, a very good look for PayPal. All right, so next let's take a look at PayPal's balance sheet. And first let's start off with PayPal's quick cash. And it has about 7.9 billion in cash and cash equivalents and about $6 billion in current investments. So in theory, this company has close to $14 billion of quick cash. Now let's take a look at PayPal's debt. They have non-current debt of 8 billion and they have no current debt. So PayPal in theory can use its cash and cash equivalents to pay off its non-current debt and still have over six billion dollars of of cash ready to use so i do like their their balance sheet a lot more than i did square but obviously with square you get a lot bigger growth uh, but this is definitely a strong balance sheet for paypal next let's take a look at mastercard so mastercard this one if we take a look at annual earnings growth it's about 20.8 percent compare to 25.3% in the industry and 22.6% in the market. So we can see the annual growth expectations for the next three to five years for MasterCard um, is a bit, is way lower than the other two we take, we mentioned a look, we, we took a look at, and it's actually smaller than what the overall industry is actually projected to do. It's actually even smaller than the overall market. Does that mean that this, and just because the growth is not gonna be the similar the stock prices is uh, is sometimes very different. So much can happen. So many acquisitions that obviously at the end of the day, Mastercard can still be a better investment than the overall market. But when I take a look at investments, I actually want them to do better than the market. And if it's better than the industry, it actually is uh, more of a bullish thesis for me. I, I'm more into growth stocks, and that's why I am very ha I'm very happy to see where Square and PayPal are at right now. Now, if we take a look at revenue growth, like I mentioned, right, market was 9.1%, industry was 11.2% for the next three to five years on an annual growth, and MasterCard is expected to go 13.8. So the revenue that MasterCard is trying to is going to grow with in expectations to analysts is a lot better than the industry and the and the market. Now let's take a look at the revenue breakdown, at how MasterCard makes money. So MasterCard makes money in these four transactions so first is domestic assessments cross-border volume fees transaction processing and that those make up pretty much most of the company's revenue and all of these are divided but all of them come from the same style of 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 transaction whenever you use a mastercard credit card or any mastercard product whenever you charge that card someone is being charged some form of fee being the store being some form of of cross cross border fees some transaction fees so those three that i mentioned even though they broke it down within three sectors they all come from that same transaction but they the the, the way they collect that fee is broken down between different different items so that makes up most of this revenue then they have another that's called other revenues other revenues is grew by 20 percent and others revenue is is what you would say let's say mastercard has a service that if you are a business you want to know how to properly how to properly deal with your debt or any type of advisement type services that's where other revenues come from and this is one that is seeing the most growth the other one seeing the most growth is transaction processing and transaction processing it means more people are using their cards which i guess is very very bullish for mastercard net revenue in total for this company was four billion dollars compared to 3.89 last year same time last year so there was a small growth in revenue for of about three percent again we saw year to year revenue for square and paypal a lot stronger than mastercard but let's take a look at masters cars margins we're most likely going to see that a mastercard's margins are going to be a lot better than the other two 
But before we take a look at margins, let's actually look at revenue growth. In 2019, this company grew 12%. In 2018, it grew 19%. And in 2017, it grew 16%. Again, this is actually a pretty strong, uh, um, a decent growth, right? Not a strong growth. Like I said, anything in the double digits, I would consider a decent growth. If you're growing above 10% compared to the same time last year, I think you're doing a great job. Obviously, the higher, the better. Gross margins for this company, which I think is actually pretty crazy, is 100%. But I guess, right, with any transactions, they're not really losing any money through there. So that's crazy to see a gross margins of 100%. I wonder if there might be a bug here in Lazy FA. Um, this is the website, so I'll have to check it out. But if we take a look at the profit margins for MasterCard, they are 48.1%. And that's actually pretty, pretty high. This is the biggest margins we've seen between the other two. So it, det it depends on what type of investor you want to be, right? If you're more into growth stocks, then Square and PayPal are definitely the it. But if you're looking more for a mixture of growth and strong profit margins, it does seem like MasterCard is the one that's going to take take that one. Profit margins 2019 were 48%, 2018 were 39%, and 2017 were 31.3%. So that's actually pretty impressive that we're seeing a growth in profit margins. Now let's take a look at their balance sheet. Has cash of about $11.7 billion and current investments of 500 million. So MasterCard has close to about $12.3 billion in cash. And MasterCard has non-current debt of about 12.5 billion. It has no, that was non-current debt. It has actually no current debt. So this, even though, even though this company has a lot of debt, we have to remember they, this is at a different level than the other ones. This is a company that's making a lot and a lot of money. So when you have a lot of money coming in with profit margins of about 40, over 40%, then it's okay for you to have non-current debt, right? Just like, let's say we have, for example, me, I make a decent amount of income. And with that great income that I make, I still, I, I, I can afford a great mortgage. And even after I pay my mortgage, I, I might have a huge debt on my mortgage, but I have enough cash flow to really pay off that debt and not really worry about it. And I do think this is where we can take a look at MasterCard, right? MasterCard, it's a company that has a nice amount of income coming in. Their, we can say their mortgages is pretty high in terms of things. But like I said, this company already has cash flow coming in, so that shouldn't shouldn't really affect it. I do think MasterCard has a very, very strong balance sheet, uh, even though it doesn't look like it when we take a look at the other two. But remember, they are in different stages. And finally, the one we're going to take a look at, the last one we're taking a look at is Visa. Visa is actually the smallest growth out of all of them. The revenue is expected to be 9.3% and the earnings are expected to be 13.4%. This is way below the industry and below the market. So this is why this was the last one we're gonna, we took a look at. We saw Square, right? Square was way above when we take a look at earnings. All of them were actually above the revenue. This is the only company that is expected to grow less in both industry in both earnings and revenue in industry and market. All right, so now let's take a look at Mass uh, Visa's revenue breakdown. So revenue this past quarter actually grew 7% compared to the same time last year. This 7% was better than that 3% that we saw in MasterCard, right? Visa, again, their revenue breakdown, if you take a look at the revenues, the names are different compared to what we saw in MasterCards, but they are really pretty much the same. Service revenues, data processing revenues, and international transaction revenues are all the revenue you collect when you use a Visa card. Other revenues similar to MasterCard was our revenues when they have some form of service, some form of advisement service that a company and individual might use Visa for. We can see the big biggest growth is other revenues that grew 20%, data processing revenues which grew 11%, and service revenues which grew 9%. Again, net revenues did grow by 7%. So again, Visa is not one I would consider a heavy grower. I would consider this more of a value play. If we take a look at Visa's past past revenue growth in 2019 it grew 11 percent in 2018 it grew 12 percent and in 2017 it grew 21 percent so it is in the high double in the double digits but it's barely breaking the teens right in the past two years it's actually around 12 percent so it, it does seem like it is slowing down 
All right, so now let's take a look at Visa's pro gross margins and profit margins. Visa, like MasterCard, is already a, a settled company, if, I, if, if that would probably be the best way to explain it. Gross margins do not are pretty pretty flat for the past four years. Right now, sitting at about 85% gross margins. So I can see how MasterCard's 100% margins isn't that off maybe there was a small bug there but if visa is also showing gross margins of 85 percent this these companies keep a lot of their money next if we take a look at profit margins profit margins for visa are 52.6 percent so we can see this is a lot better than mastercard when we take a look at the amount of cash flow collection so right all these companies are in different stages of life where Square and PayPal are more of uptrending that growth, Mastercard and Visa have already already put a stamp on their name and now are just improving their profit margins. All right, next let's take a look at liability distribution. Visa has four billion dollars in current debt. Not something I'd like to see, but Visa has enough cash to pretty much pay off pay off their current debt and still have about eight billion dollars. No, actually more like nine billion dollars. Nine billion. Yep, nine billion dollars left over non-current debt for visa is 13.9 billion dollars and again similar to what we did with mastercard this is a company that's collecting 50 percent margins on their profit profit margins so it's okay for them to have a bigger non-current debt compared to those growth stocks that we saw earlier before so again this is a very strong balance sheet when we take a take account their cash flow so that's it guys i hope you guys enjoyed these four companies let me know if you want me to do a full in-depth analysis on any of them or remember monday matches is coming do you guys want to see a square versus paypal or maybe you want to see a mastercard versus visa i think those two are very comparable against each other so let me know on the comments like always guys don't forget to hit the subscribe button the thumbs up and the bell it helps the small channel out so much and i truly truly appreciate all the support thank you guys and take care